Yo, yo, yiggity, yo. What's good, y'all? My name is Christian Covington. Happy Black History Month. We are here, we're live, we're active. This year, I wanted to do another Black History Month series. So about four years ago, I did a Black History Month series on this channel. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. The reason I'm actually deciding to do another Black History Month series is because a couple weeks ago I got a comment. It was basically like, I feel like this series was really dope and it should have got more views. And I was like, true. So shout out to whoever you are who left that comment because that is what inspired me to do this uh, Black History Month series again. For this series, I wanted to feature the four living generations of my family. The oldest living generation of my family is my grandfather and grandmother and their siblings. They were asked to share a little bit about their experience growing up as a black person. And what I wanted to do was kind of compare and see the differences and similarities in the ways that they grew up versus the ways that my mother, myself, and then the youngest generation of my family grew up. This was very interesting to try to do with the oldest generation of my family. As you know, you know, they might not be as tech savvy, especially from so far away. So I just wanna give a big, big shout out to all of the people in the older generation who were able to participate. So, so thankful for you all being willing to share your stories. These videos are definitely not about the quality, it is about the content. All right, here we go. The oldest living generation of my family. Happy Black History Month. Never complain about what you inherited. Always look at that as an opportunity to build your own history. Your history is your story. In the 1940s, my father moved the family from Mount Bow, Mississippi to Kansas City, Kansas. This was a small, tight-knit community. All of the people in the community were Black. We had a great relationship. One thing that I remember so well about our community was that we had what we felt like we needed in order to have a good life. My father always knew how to take what he had and make what he needed and provide for his family. No matter what the external conditions were, we need to learn how to live within our containers. God blessed us all to have. There were local uh, grocery stores owned and operated by blacks. We had an ice cream parlor and barbecue restaurants. There were drug stores and gas stations and churches. I was content, but as I grew older and ventured outside of my neighborhood, I realized that things were different. I came face to face with segregation. I was not directly exposed to white people until we moved from our home. We were the first black family to move into that neighborhood. We had a main street called Minnesota where the whites had their stores and businesses and theaters and restaurants that refused to serve black people. So we had to stand up at the counter while the whites were able to sit at tables and chairs. We had to deal with separate libraries. We had to deal with special days to even go to public parks, swimming pools and amusement parks. Slowly but surely, I became aware of two Americas, one for blacks and the other for whites. I had a supervisor, his name was Warren, and Warren looked at me one day and he says, why aren't you at home having babies? You built to have babies. Why is your hair not like the other Negroes? It shouldn't be like that. And I got mad and I told him, my great, great, great grandmother was right back, your great, 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 great grandfather. And that's why I look like I look. One day, the white children who lived across the street from us were playing in their front yard, marching around with big holsters, mocking us. The words on the signs were, nigger, monkeys, get out, go back to Africa. Within the first year after we moved, things began to change as white families quickly began to move out of the neighborhood as more and more black families moved in. My first experience of knowing I was black and being discriminated against was when I was about nine years old, eight or nine years old. It was about five of us. And we were going down this viaduct, and that's what they call a stream of water that's going through the city. We go uh, in the various parts of the park picking up pecans. This cop came up to us, and he wanted to know what you niggas are doing out here. And naturally, we, that was 
a little scared, so we tried to send him just to pick him up a car. He told us to get back over there in nigger town, and he never wanted to catch us over there again. So my feelings about our police, and that word nigger has not haunted me, but I have never forgotten it. Sometimes you might go to a store and you hear somebody saying something. On the bus, you might hear somebody saying something. I remember being spat on while protesting in a picket line in front of a segregated popular restaurant. With my grandmother, went to the doctor's office when she was diagnosed with leukemia. This was one of the best doctors in Kansas City for leukemia. I was 11 or 12 years old, and they had a waiting room for the white people and a waiting room for the black people. The white people, no matter what time they came, they were saw and the back black people just merged in. When I was in the sixth grade, I was impacted by the systematic racism that were designed to keep black students out of the predominantly white schools. 80 years ago, I watched my uncle in Clarksdale, Mississippi, get brutalized, drove behind a truck, tarred and feathered and hung. I was four or five years old at the time. I got a call this past week from my cousin in Clarksdale, Mississippi, the same city, 80 some years later, they killed his son last week, drug him and killed him two blocks from his house in 2021. The Ku Klux Klan is doing the same thing now they did then. Sadly, in the year 2021, we're still fighting for justice and racial equality here in America. I'm proud to see our younger generation speaking up, voting and running for public offices. I fully support the goals and strategies of the Black Lives Movement. I'm happy to know that a lot of non-Black people are really fighting for the Black Lives Matter. That they're, they're really finally learning that we're all made, we just have different colors, but we're, we're God's people and everybody should be tra treated the same way. I wanted my children to understand that they had a responsibility because they were black. That to get the color black, you have to take all the colors in the spectrum and put them in the same container. When we talk about black is beautiful, black is beautiful because it contains every other color. I am thankful for our supportive parents and siblings who encouraged me to move past the hurt and the hatred of racist people. It was at that point that I had to sign up to work for equality and justice for people who look like me. My parents left us a legacy. Our heritage is what we inherit, what we get from our parents when we come. We take that heritage and we build on it our own history. And from our history, we have to leave a legacy. My joy is watching my children emulate me as I emulate my father, my father, his father. Legacy is important. Legacy is how we continue to live eternally. Thank you so much for watching. You can expect one of these videos each Saturday of this month. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Peace up, A-Town Down. Yiggity.